Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sanket Pisat and this is in relation to a query which is posted by one of our uh, members in one of our discussion groups and this is with regards to residual septum. So the case in question is something like this. Uh, this is uh, a 28 year old lady so all images are not exactly of the same patient but uh, this is a 28 year old lady and she has had a septal incision done about a few months ago and post the incision she has come back with a residual septum of uh, around one centimeter okay and uh, the other profiles that we know are uh, she is 28 years of age and uh, she's <clears throat> been uh, trying for conception since the past two years does not have any uh, past bad obstetric history so no recurrent losses and the plan of action as of now for this patient uh, as has been decided is to go ahead with a natural cycle so that means they are not really considering an IVF treatment or something as of now so with this background the question that is asked is this residual septum should it be cut or should it not be cut and we've got mixed responses from our members in the group so let's try to analyze exactly what this question is about and what we can do for this patient let's first take a look at the symptom at the images per se so now if you look at the image this one image on the left this image is the real image of the patient this is for representational purposes only since we don't have a very clear image i have taken this image uh, from the net but you can see that it will be approximately the same where this is a long septum which is running almost up till the more than half of the mid cavity so definitely incision of the septum is required and you can also see that there is no apparent external fundal dip over here that means we are not dealing with a bicornuate uterus or a, um, any other variant of like a bicorporeal septate or any other variant like that this is a typically septate uterus and therefore the correct treatment is to cut the septum and you always know that uh, we cut the septum in order to leave a little bit of the arcuate fundus behind so we ne generally never go ahead and cut the septum to the extent that we will cut from here to here because excessive cutting is also going to weaken the fundus and it might result in perforation so first of all this residual septum that has remained behind now maybe i'll just change the color this residual septum that has remained behind now is not an indication of a poorly done surgery okay so uh, i think we should not be under the fact that because the residual septum has remained the surgery was done halfway in fact i think the surgery was done very judiciously where the surgeon has stopped approximately up to this level and then uh, because of for want of saving the fundus uh, this surgery has been left at that so the other thing that happens in my opinion again this is personal opinion and there will be a lot of varying literature about this but the other thing that happens is after this kind of a long septum has been cut generally what happens is that after a period of three months or so some remodeling also occurs is what i feel and because of this remodeling uh, a septum that did not seem very significant at that time so that means you cut it and you felt that it is only this much after some time when you do the usg it appears a little more indented as compared to the septum that you had left behind then prompting you to think whether you should have cut a little more at that stage or whether cutting this much was sufficient so first of all the first thing that i would say is the surgery has not been performed incompletely the surgery has been performed correctly having said that we are left with a residual septum now so this term residual septum is a term that is actually used in literature and it is uh, the cause of this residual septum typically is either uh, that a small portion of the septum was left behind or it can also be that some synechia formation has happened and this is possible so even though we give uh, estrogen supplementation which again is controversial and we also leave a Foley's balloon inside the cavity 
it is possible that some synecae formation can happen and this residual septum may be either of these two things so it could be a part of the septum which has little bit remodeled because of the change in shape of the uterus and is now seeming a little more projecting or it could be synecae formation as well so let's take let's go to the next slide and see now exactly what to do about this uh, residual septum right so looking at this picture now what we see is that there is no doubt in the fact that a residual septum is there now the question is with the lady being 28 years old and planning a natural cycle and uh, this signi so the significant amount of septum has gone you can see the septum earlier was about that much size so that septum has gone now so with this with this background should we really be doing surgery or can she attempt a pregnancy with this septum already in place also i don't know if i shared this data with you before but it has been shared with us that this septum is approximately one centimeter in size so from here to here if you measure this length this length has been reported to be one centimeter in size so that brings us to the decision making point of operate or not operate okay so there are two contrasting views over here people who are in favor of the not operate group will say that there is only a small portion of the septum which is left behind now this small portion of the septum is going to be most of the time a muscular septum because you know that when we have long septa so imagine that it is the previous picture and the septum is like this okay then usually in this kind of septum we have previously also discussed multiple times that when you have this kind of a septum maybe this much portion of the septum is typically fibrous in nature and this is less vascular so this is the fibrous part and the top part the top portion of the septum is usually the muscular part so this part remaining from here above this part is the muscular part and because it is muscular in origin this is also well vascularized yeah and because it is well vascularized only a small part of this septum has remained let, let me get rid of all this because only a small part of the septum has remained which is now not fibrous which is quite well vascularized you can leave this septum alone as well and she may be able to get pregnant with that septum in place so because it is a small septum it is muscular the vascularity of the septum will be good you can leave it alone and she can try for conception okay however there is a contrarian view also which everyone may not agree with first of all we are not sure whether this residual septum is actually a septum which is left behind or it is synecae and at least in my limited knowledge of ultrasound it is not really possible to make out which of the two conditions we are actually dealing with one thing second thing a second look hysteroscopy is something that we recommend to all patients where large masses or extensive uterine surgeries have been done it could be septum it could be lateral metroplasty it could be myoma resection as well and it could be synecolysis as well and the reason for doing this is after any extensive intrauterine surgery we have seen that no matter how much adhesion prevention we give some synecae formation does happen okay so somewhere you will have synecae formation happening now the question is whether this is septum or whether this is synecae you can choose to so ideally the answer would be you will do nothing you will wait and you will see if this lady conceives with a few months of treatment which is quite possible but if you give me a choice means if i had to make a choice for this patient rather than so she's already had two years of infertility okay rather than spending more time and giving her a trial and error treatment in which we consider whether this is actually a residual septum or whether this is synecae and whether she gets pregnant or not i on the other hand would prefer to do a second look hysteroscopy okay in that second look hysteroscopy then comes the question that if i am doing a second look hysteroscopy after three months will i choose to cut the septum or will i choose to not cut the septum most of the times i would choose to cut the septum why 
बिकॉज द सेप्टम बींग इन से टू मे और मे नॉट अगेन दिस इज माई पर्सनल ओपिनियन सो आई विल नॉट होल्ड यू रॉन्ग इफ यू हैव अ डिफरेंस ऑफ ओपिनियन दिस सेप्टम मे और मे नॉट बी अ इम्पेडिमेंट फॉर हर फर्टिलिटी हाउ एवर लेट अस चेंज द सीनारियो हियर एंड से दैट दिस सेम लेडी इज नॉट ट्वेंटी एट ईयर्स ओल्ड शी इज थर्टी सिक्स ईयर्स ओल्ड एंड शी इज नॉट गोइंग फॉर नेचुरल साइकिल प्रेगनेंसी शी इज गोइंग फॉर आई वी एफ नाउ गिवन दिस सीनारियो वुड यू कट द सेप्टम और नॉट आई थिंक मोस्ट आई वी एफ स्पेशलिस्ट वुड एग्री दैट येस वी नीड टू कट द सेप्टम फॉर श्योर बिकॉज दे वॉन्ट टू मैक्सिमाइज द चांसेस ऑफ आई वी एफ सक्सेस एक्स्ट्रापोलेटिंग द सेम थिंग टू अ यंग पेशेंट आई थिंक वी आई वुड कंसिडर दैट अ सेकेंड लुक हिस्ट्रोस्कोपी इज नॉट रियली अ वेरी मेजर सर्जरी सो आई वुड कंसिडर दैट इट इज क्वाइट अ माइनर सर्जरी इट विल नॉट टेक मोर देन फिफ्टीन मिनट्स टू डू इट कैन बी डन अंडर शॉर्ट जनरल एनेस्थीसिया और आई वी सीडेशन यू आर गोइंग टू यूज ओनली सीजर्स टू कट द सेप्टम बिकॉज फॉर सच अ शॉर्ट सेप्टम यू रियली डू नॉट नीड रिसेक्टोस्कोप and after that so the question then is will resynechia formation happen or not most of the times we have seen that resynechia formation still can happen can happen but these synechia are usually very flimsy and the outcomes after doing this resynechia means after doing a repeat synecholysis the uh, pregnancy rates are much better as compared to doing nothing so uh, in order to cut the story short and give you an unbiased opinion two schools of thought you could wait maybe for two cycles three cycles or six months and see if she conceives if she conceives then great then your unnecessary procedure is completely avoided and you're done once she conceives again because of the residual septum the slight risk of recurrent abortion still remains and the other one would be to do a second look and to operate which i think uh, re surgery is not as extensive as what we make out to be this is not a repeat uh, endometriosis surgery or a repeat peritonectomy or bowel resection or something like that which is going to be a very invasive surgery for a very small 15 minute surgery i don't mind doing a re surgery getting rid of the septum so i will cut the septum and then uh, i will maybe give her a gap of one or two months and then uh, she can follow up with the uh, fertility specialist and try to uh, try for conception so for me uh, i would like to give her the benefit of doubt and i would like to operate on this patient rather than wait again now my last point before we uh, end the discussion if you look at the asrm criteria so now you know that there are two criteria there is asrm and then there is conuta and in this video itself i will tell you so in conuta classification the simple thing that they say is if this is the uterus like this and this is the septum over here like this and these are the two ostial attachments in the cornuals is this thing section of the 3d you draw a line from one ostium to the other ostium and you measure two parameters so one parameter is the thickness of the septum below the interostial line and the other parameter is the thickness of the fundus maybe a different color is the thickness of the fundus above the interostial line and if the blue arrow i'm sorry if the green line so let me go back just to make it easy for you if this green line okay if this green line is more than 50% of the blue line then this patient is diagnosed to have a septum and she should undergo surgery this is not for repeat septum this is as far as definition of septum is concerned on the other hand the in the asrm criteria what they say is that if you have a septum then they take an absolute indication and the absolute indication is that one the length of the septum should be 1 cm or more and if you look in the description only it has been given that this is 1 cm and the other the this thing that they give is that the angle of the septum should be 90 degrees or less so i don't know the angle exactly over here but if you look it does seem to be a 90 degree angle so again in terms of asrm criteria at least this is a septum that may uh, cause a problem for the patient to get pregnant so giving the patient the benefit of doubt 
my choice unequivocally in this case of residual septum will be to operate let me know in the comments if you're in the group or if you're watching this on youtube let me know in the comments what you think and what your management will be uh, contrarian decisions as always those of you who are on our group know that contrarian decisions are always most welcome provided they are accompanied by not by literature or by reviews but by some kind of sensible argument which dictates the contrary to what we have just discussed again lastly for all of you for those of you who have not yet joined I would request you to visit our website www.endogynetraining.com where we have the link to a discussion group. Uh, do join that discussion group and you can also post such queries and uh, we will try and answer them for the benefit of everyone. So I think that's it for this video. Thank you very much and uh, hope to see all of you again soon. Thank you.